Milo was irking Justin more and more all the time. He asked him to aid in his search for his family. He would not, however, offer him anything to work with. He slept for the majority of the day and was up at night. He questioned whether Milo went out and murdered people every night. If he had, it would have undoubtedly been reported on in the media or the press, or someone would have brought it up. Additionally concerned about Milo's propensity to be ill, he would have experienced that as well. For the upcoming year, he declared he would primarily behave like a person. What did that mean, though? Would he eventually resemble Milo more? Or perhaps there was something else wrong with Milo? He passed Amy's dorms as he walked down the street. He would never allow himself to think such things. He pondered how this might affect their relationship. He would eventually tell her, but how would she react? Would she wish to depart from him? He anticipated her wrath for keeping this a secret. He struck the button on her room carelessly. No response. It was too early for her to be at work, and she had no class. He buzzed it once more. Still no response. When he noticed someone making their way toward the door, he carried on going. He tried not to consider it. He was already a vampire, he didn't want to add getting dumped to his problems. He would fetch a coffee. He always found that to be calming. When he reached into his pockets, he realized he had packed no cash. He had his cards and identification, but his coffee business only accepted cash. Normally, he would have seen this as a cue to leave immediately. However, it would now just take a few minutes to travel to the bank in the downtown area and return. Additionally, he wasn't in a rush to return home. He soon arrived in front of the enormous structure. Even with everything going on, it managed to make him feel insignificant in some way. It had been constructed more than a century earlier. He was often taken aback by how expansive and goody the design was. He questioned how the bank itself could afford such a magnificent structure. Because there were so few branches in the state, it was a small bank, which gave Justin more reason to trust them. Deligno Plague Meden was a name that also had a fairy tale like quality to it. He was still feeling the rising wrath inside. But as he approached the structure, he attempted to remain composed. To return to the life he had before, he would stop at nothing. He could see every floor at the time. But in contrast to now, it felt ideal. It would all be back to normal if he could only get Milo out of his life. As soon as Milo was out of the picture, he could regain control of his life. Before he knew it, he was inside filling out a withdrawal slip. The black and white marble on the counter matched that of the pillars that lined the place. He only got as far as jotting his address down when another man approached the counter where he stood. Justin tried to move over to make room for him. But he just seemed to get closer. His hair was long and unkempt. Each time Justin tried to move over a little, the man seemed to move in closer. He had a smell that Justin wasn't familiar with. He initially believed it might be B.O., but it wasn't all that horrible. The long, thin, messy fingernails of the man tapped on the marble. Justin remained silent while continuing to maintain his composure. He discovered it was nearly impossible to focus on this guy standing so close while doing something as simple as filling out the form. Can I help you? Justin snapped, almost shouting, and much louder than he had planned. He received a few sideways looks as his cheeks heated up. There was a glassy expression in the man's eyes as he started plucking at his fingernails. He appeared to have no idea what he was doing. The wet blood mixed with the dry till the one nail had totally popped off, landing close to Justin's hand. The man touched his hair while appearing unconscious of what he was doing. It's not generally this dark. Brown, blonde, a few times even blue. It isn't typically black. He extended his hand with a clump of hair. Do you believe it fits me? He was back to fiddling with his fingers before Justin could respond. The man inched closer to Justin without regard for personal space. This isn't the color of my hair, really. He spoke in a whisper. Until I find him, I can't let them find me. They find me offensive. He searched the room from behind Justin. Justin questioned, who? Not caring about the response but fearing that if he didn't speak to the man, he could be in danger. The man glanced over at Justin before ducking down as if he were hiding from someone. They are able to see me but not see me. No one has any idea, and I won't reveal it to them. Justin sensed dread and foreboding as the stranger continued to speak. He was there, but he didn't want to be. He had lost interest in coffee. All he wanted was to go home. More than everything, he wanted to turn his head away from the man, but he discovered it was incredibly difficult to do. The figure appeared less horrifying the closer he got. Like a performer who is decked out. On the outside, they appeared terrible. However, you can still tell they were really attractive through the tiny amount of makeup. Justin wondered what he would look like with the additions because he had a button nose and round cheeks. The man quickly ducked under the counter with no prior notice. The only thing still visible was his hands. 
At that moment, Justin noticed a conversation behind him. A man and a lady were seen walking by. Fabian, do you truly believe he may have been responsible? I mean, it seems more likely that it was a lightning strike of some sort? The female asked the male companion. Uncertain of why Justin pondered the eclectic accident that had occurred a few months before. Of course, they weren't talking about it, though. It had been so long. No, it wasn't him, of course. He might attempt to exert control over elitism. But I doubt that anyone truly thinks he can. But I don't think he would ever do something that foolish. We need to talk to him because of this. Justin attempted to listen in without being seen. It seemed crucial. It's as if he needed to know this information. To his relief, the odd, strange man was no longer there. As he went to finish filling out his withdrawal, he found it was missing. Checking the floor, he resigned that he only imagined filling it out and pulled another one out from the front slots. Milo hated the TV. It was like talking to a person but not having the ability to tell them how stupid they were being. Justin had shown Milo what he called live television. This name made no scene but chose not to question it out loud. He found the more you asked questions, the stupider you looked, and no one respected people they thought to be dumb. There were a lot of things he still didn't understand, but he was an expert at faking it. He hoped that if he could get the local news, he could read between the lines and get some useful information out of it. But whatever he was watching was not news. It was nonsense, all theatricals that people wanted to argue about. He didn't have time for their games. Milo turned the TV off. He was at his breaking point. His head sank into his palms. How much longer could he put up with this? Everything was silent, and he could almost think. He could not connect to his line because of something. But he believed he could sense it at that precise time. He was so accustomed to that concession. Although it wasn't as intense, there was a spark. He extended his hand in an effort to grab it. To cling to it. All was not lost if he could pull that off. It seemed to pull time like a string. It was inches away from his fingertips and just ahead. Then, with a smash, the entranceway opened. Milo fell back into the present by himself. Justin flung a newspaper at him before he could say anything. Justin walked over to the kitchen as he spoke. Since you showed you didn't like the news anchor's voice, I thought you would appreciate this. It would have been preferable to the metal box, Milo thought as he examined the paper. At least he could understand this. I require a quill. Milo questioned as he turned the pages. I have a pen, Justin said as he handed him the small plastic tool. It's like magic. It has an endless supply of ink in it. It isn't magic, Milo snorted. It was immediately apparent how the device operated. It appeared as though Justin was merrily cracking a joke. But in Milo's condition, it seemed like a slight. His stomach felt queasy at that same moment. He was thirsty and wanted the tea that he regularly made for Grendel and himself. A quick and simple method of getting through meals. It was the simplest technique to keep a regular heartbeat because it was made of diluted blood. He just made it to the sink after leaping up from the sofa before blood started pouring out of his mouth. Justin remained still. Milo remained in front of the sink. Fearful that it will occur again. Embarrassed that it would repeat. For days, he hadn't eaten. He wouldn't be able to maintain any blood in his system if this continued. His heartbeat was currently so irregular that he might have passed for a net The cold-blooded vampires with no heartbeat. What would that be like for him?